this, the Classic Army UMP. I need to do the most basic amount of work as I can to it. There's a £150 budget, the gun is literally box fresh. The trick is, do as little as I can to it, spend 150 quid maximum to make it the best it can be. On 11.1, it's a beast in full auto. Unfortunately, on semi-auto, it doesn't work on 11.1, it gives you double taps and flaps around. So, full auto. You can hear that motor winding down. By the time I let go of the trigger, it's still firing. Ready? Yeah? Semi-auto. So that's what active brake is for, to stop that happening. But wiring in a MOSFET and so forth, although that can be very cheap, it's time consuming and I charge by the hour. My understanding is these are exactly the same as the G&G. And that means you've got to wind them for about four hours. 232 on a 0.25. What I like about this actually. Okay, so it says classic army on it. It does. And it says AEG and UMC and stuff like that. And six millimeter auto. That bugs me. And they've got fake body pins in it. Look, fake body pins. And the color of the plastic is really good compared to what other people's UMPs look like and what a real UMP looks like. I can see me buying one of these. First things first, we're definitely fucking that off. I think there's a nine millimeter bushings. Now I've said it, they fucking won't be. Dush. Fucking hell, that's a small spring. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Fuck you! Oh, bastard! Ooh, excellent. Fucking hell, that hurt. That really stung. Shit on me. Okay, here's the bill. I've gone through parts that I've got. I've gone through parts that I'm never gonna use. I've gone through parts of the people that said, yeah, use it for somebody else, we need some help and all that kind of shit. So I am building something now. This is not meant to be a high rate of fire. It's not meant to be high power. It's meant to be a normal AEG with a bit of pep and it's gonna have to be something that's reliable. So I have gone through everything. Parts I'm charging for. I'm gonna go with the Perrin V3 MOSFET. That is the optical version. I'm gonna go with one of them. I've got a set of rocket gears that I had already short stroked down to 14 teeth. They were for a different build and I realized, ah, then I decided I didn't want to use them. So they've got, they're brand new. So they've already been short stroked by two, one off the front and off the back, as is that one. This one here is a ZCI bevel. Again, out of a brand new set. These are the ones that I believe mesh well together. The cylinder came out of a bits box, cylinder head, piston, and piston head, all from a bits box. The original stuff that's in there is bore up, that's no real good for a barrel this short. Um, it's kind of pointless. It's not gonna give anything beneficial and the quality of the cylinder isn't very good. The uh, quality of the piston head isn't very good. So I've gone with it this way. And by not very good, I don't mean it's bad. I just mean that I wouldn't use it. Right, okay, it's all done. It's got a 3D piston, a 3D piston head, a 3D cylinder head, a 3D cylinder, the original nozzle and tappet plate. I've set it up for 14 tooth, 18 to one rocket gears. In the end, I had to keep the original bevel, the classic army supply, because I couldn't make any other bevel sit against the gears. Didn't like it, it was just too tight. So I've uh, polished up the sides of the spur gear, set everything in nicely, shim, blah -de blah and went with an old school Perrin V3 optical. The motor in here is still completely original, which means it's a little bit, oh, I don't think I like what's going on. It's confused. The motor gets a little bit warm if you run 11.1, because it is literally a motor that comes out of a two pound bargain bin. But for what the guy wants it for, it's perfect. I'd say grab some mid caps because these do take a hell of a lot of winding to make do anything. 
Now he has seven fours, so I'm throwing a seven four lion on this. He wants to use a seven four lion, I'm using a seven four lion. He wants to use a seven four lipo, so I'm using a seven four lipo. He's gonna use. <clears throat> He's gonna use seven four, so I'm gonna test this on seven four. Customer wants you. Oh, come on, mate. The customer wants to use a fuck. The customer wants to use the seven four, so I've got it running seven four right now, so safe. Semi. Three round burst. Eleven one. Safe. Semi. Three shot burst. Now, on the 11-1, the motor goes, are you sure? I'm, I'm a bit cheap for this, I've got to be honest. So, when it comes time, he's going to change it out to a much nicer motor. I'd suggest the warhead, because the warhead in here is going to make it fucking unstoppable. I'm really happy with this. Nice and cheap. Brand new gun got sent to me. I don't reckon it was brand new. It looks a bit dirty to me. Lots of dust, but there you go. So here's what I did a few weeks back. Uh, it started playing up. It started being fussy. So it got sent back to me to see what the problem was. And I've discovered an inherent flaw with something. Check this shit out. There's Mr. Retro Arms Gearbox. You know, that thing that everyone loves. Now, before I point out this glaring issue, I'm aware this is a different upper to what a lot of people use. I completely understand. Maybe there's a problem up here, but the problem is actually at the bottom of the gearbox. Check this shit out, seriously. If you just want to change the spring out, that's the extent you've got to go to if you don't want to detach the upper. You can detach the upper without taking the back off, but the stock screw still needs to come out. Not as quick as you'd like. This also means you can't get to your hot rubber very easily. It's kind of a stupid design. If you change a hot rubber in a hurry, you're taking your upper apart. It's fucking stupid. Now what I found is that this here keeps breaking. Tap it plate, likes to snap. That is because you could assume that it's not happy up here, right? It's not being put back together properly. That's not the case. This had splayed open. It's CNC'd aluminium, meant to be decent quality, shouldn't do that, right? That is a perfectly shimmed gearbox. There is no movement left or right on any of the gears. It is absolutely perfect. It turns nicely. It's great. So here's what happens, ready? You have to under shim this portion of the gearbox. You've got no choice. You have to under shim it. Because when you clamp it closed, there's flex in this part of the gearbox casing. There's flex in it. Watch what happens when I squeeze it. Ready? I'm not gonna squeeze on the bushings of the gears. Ready? So I'm gonna leave it as it is. Ready? Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Now you could probably do that with every single gearbox casing if it were cut down the middle, but they ain't cut down the middle. These are designed to be this way. I haven't got an ICS to hand to see if it does the same thing, but I'd be intrigued to know if that's why ICS keep breaking their fucking tappet plates. We're now gonna change out the gearbox casing. The whole job was done and I said to the customer, well, I've sorted it, I know what the issue is. It might do it again really quickly. It might do it again in a year or so's time. I don't know. There's no way of telling. And bearing in mind, he supplied 99% of the parts for this build. So what am I going to do about it? And he's gone, yeah, fuck it, change it out. And I said, are you sure? It's an expensive casing. It'd be kind of pointless, you know? And he said, nope, I can put that casing into a, an HPA build. Let's do that. And I said, okay. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change out his casing. Before I change it, watch this. This one here is the cheapy version. Okay, in my last video about it, I said that it was ZCI, I was mistaken. I actually put it in the comments afterwards. It's actually a company called XT or something like that. Okay, so check this out, ready? So I'm gonna undo that. We'll pop the pin out. Upper off the lower. Now, this is one that I've been fucking around with trying to break. So the gears are in there, perfectly shimmed, all that stuff, but they're not the best uh, best quality of gears right now because they're very old, bruised and beaten up. But it does work. But seriously, check this shit out. 
that has got no movement up and down on any of the gears, everything is fine. Sounds exactly the same as that one. Right, when I squeeze it, as hard as I can, there's no flex. There's some different design stuff in there. You know, you've got a post here for the switch. I don't think anybody be using one of these will actually be using it with a regular switch, but obviously they're making it so you can, so it's in there. There's no flex in it. It is absolutely solid. Absolutely solid. And these are what? 85, 90 quid? And how much are these? Double that? These are really fussy with the bushings that go in them. They can be off spec very slightly with the gears and the placement of gears. These aren't. And it just makes my brain go round in circles like what, what the, you know? I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. So it's all done. I've changed out the gearbox from the CNC'd retro arm split type. Although I've done a lot of testing on the cheapy version, I've done a lot of testing. This isn't anywhere near as flimsy as that one. This seems to be a lot better. It was easier to shim. It went into pretty much everything that I've tried it in so far. But now he's got a much cheaper non-CNC'd cast ZCI casing. It's exactly the same as this one here. Exactly the same. Eight millimeter bushings, QD spring guide and steel, all that shit. Now, my issue is that for something that should be so fucking good, and apparently a few techs have sort of turned their back on retro arms recently for shit like this, it's a bit bollocksy, isn't it? So quick change in the spring. If you change your spring, you take your stock tube off with the screw at the back, take out four screws in the back of here, take the plate off, then you've got access to your quick change mechanism. That makes it a lot more sturdier, that piece at the back makes it a lot sturdier. I'm happy with that. Uh, it's not quicker to have the removable upper. I'm still, I'm not quite seeing the point for certain builds, I'm really not. Now, when one of these, let's assume retro arms or this one, when they're inside a different body, Realistically, you can just change the quick change spring in the back if you want to, and it's a lot quicker and simpler to remove the upper, I guess. But for CNC split gearbox bodies, in case you really do want to have one upper that's completely different power, that's got different um, angle of engagement, all that kind of shit you want to toss around with, that's fine. Uh, these seem to be good. The retro arm seems to be a bit bollocks, in my opinion. I've been saying it for a while, a lot of people tried to get me to try them and test them, whatever, and they're just not all that. You know, the gears don't sit properly. This basic casing that I've put in here was a fucking breeze to shim. Absolutely perfect. This was easier to shim. The retro arms, not impressed with. But this now with the cheaper casing, locked to semi, 1.7 joules on a 3.2. That's hopping it nice and distancy. That's a lot nicer, a lot nicer. I'm a lot happier with that. But now I do have to figure out something to do with this fucking casing. I need to put it in something. I've got it, it's mine, I've been testing it, I can't use it. So I've got to put it in something, and I haven't got a fucking clue what yet, but I've got to put it in something I'll actually use. If you're gonna spend the fucking money on it, you may as well stick it in something you can use, and I don't know what it's gonna be yet.